In my earlier video titled DevOps 101, I introduced the concept of DevOps and the basic idea of a new cultural wave. I'm Abhinav Krishna Kaiser, an author and a management consultant. I specialize in DevOps, Agile, and in IT service management areas. I've written books on ITIL and on DevOps. I've given the links to my books in the description below. Today, we look at a metaphor called as the wall of confusion which drives home the point of the reason for DevOps' existence. I will further explain how DevOps aids in solving the problem. This image represents the wall of confusion. On one end of the wall, we have the development team that consists of developers and testers. That's the left side of the wall. On the right side, we have the operations teams. In non-DevOps organizations, development and operation teams sit in different silos, which is nothing but a wall in between the two parties. Similar to what you see in the image. Let's look at the development and operation teams from what their job entails. The development team is put in place to develop new features and to develop new products. The operation teams, on the other hand, exist to ensure that the environments are maintained and are stable. In other words, the operations teams want to maintain status quo. The development team's objectives of developing new features involves changes to the existing environment, so it necessarily means that the changes are pushed into an environment. So in effect, a potentially stable environment can get destabilized due to the changes that have been put in, which is in direct contradiction with the objectives of the operation teams. So this contradiction where the development teams are needed to push changes and operation teams needing to keep the environment stable is represented as confusion in the wall of confusion metaphor. This is a direct contradiction in what the development and operation teams want to do. While one wants change, the other doesn't because it risks stability. If you have ever been in a change advisory board meeting, that's CAB meeting, you will often hear the operation teams pushing back on the changes by questioning the change, querying on various test cases and tests that have been performed. In other words, they try to put spanner in the box. I'm not saying they're wrong to do so. Think from their perspective. If the testing is incomplete or not done satisfactorily, there is a chance that it could result in a failed change implementation or worse as incidents in the production environment. This would undermine the stability of the system. As I mentioned earlier, this contradiction between the development and operation teams is called as the wall of confusion. Now let's see how DevOps provides a solution to this quagmire. In DevOps, teams are not situated in silos. I'm specifically referring to the development and operation teams that support a product. So both the development and operation teams are part of the same team. They do not have different objectives. The entire team has a single set of objectives that apply to everybody in the team. This is in stark contrast to non-DevOps teams where development teams objectives are to introduce new features and operation teams objectives is to maintain stability. The objective for a DevOps team would be to rapidly develop new features and to introduce them to production as quickly as possible. And most importantly, while changes happen to the product, the environment needs to remain stable. We are not compromising on the stability of the system in order to push the changes. We want the yin and we also want the yang. How does it actually work on the ground? How do we maintain stability 
while introducing rapid changes, you might ask. Continuous testing is embedded into the development process and this is one of the drivers that ensure quality. But in this context, I'm interested to bring in where the operation team's handshake take place. The operations personnel, as I mentioned earlier, are a part of the same team as the development team. So they are aware of the various features and changes to the product that is getting developed. They have first-hand information on the various tests that have been performed and the outcome of each of these tests. The results are out there for all the team members to see. If the operations teams have any questions on the changes or new features or changes or questions on new features that are getting introduced, they would have asked and got an answer during the development and testing stages itself and not during the release stage, which is generally the case in non-DevOps organizations. And definitely not during CAB meetings. It is important that the operation teams constructively question the developers to ensure that any changes that may have been in the armor are addressed. This will make the product stable and address the issues in lower environments rather than in production. We would rather have a thousand bugs in the development environment rather than one bug in production, generally speaking. And for the operation teams, since they are part of the entire setup from Genesis, there will be no such thing called as transition to support. The operations teams will be ready to start supporting from day one without a formal handover because they would have been as intimate with the changes as the development team. This is a classic example of a win-win situation where the DevOps methodology not only breaks down the wall, but makes the entire process of development and support look easy and seamless. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding the benefits of DevOps that is a result of the amalgamation of the development and operation teams. If you are interested in delving further, head over to my blog, abhinavpmp.com. If you have any questions, do post them in comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye-bye. Thank you.